else, my friends, is... The Lord's promise of salvation from hell pleases them. The Lord's salvation from misery and sin here on earth does not. This doesn't look like salvation from misery and sin. The wicked pray for deliverance from the fires of hell while piling the kindling high. They proclaim their love for their Lord, yet in his name they serve themselves. Their self-regard crumbles in the light of their hateful iniquities. So, so true. Mr. McCraith, my friend, I'm so glad you agree. Now the wicked man never questions- I have your answers. What? Yes, good. Perhaps we should discuss this privately, if you'll give me just a moment. It's quite the story. You might not wish to hear it. Neither may the good people here. Please, this is not the time. We want to hear the story. Let the Banisher speak. Tell them, Red. Tell them good. Aye. There's a story that starts with a question. A question for you, Governor. And maybe for all the good people of New Eden. If I give you a witch, will you do what you did to Deborah Comenius? Comenius, say you? The school teacher walked with the devil and paid the appropriate price. That's the beginning of the history and also its end. Is it, though? Now, I've learned much about Deborah Comenius and what happened to her, and it tells a very different tale. And what story, pray you, does it tell? It tells the story of a man, a latter-day King Solomon. When plague struck his subjects, they turned to him for guidance and protection. For they were God-fearing folk, and he was a godly king. The king turned his flock to God, but it was not enough. The plague spread on. The king, worried about his position, needed a sacrificial lamb. You lose the run of your tongue, Mr. McCraith, and of the head to which it's fixed. There was no lamb. There was a trial. Fair and lawful. You're a pompous coward, fearful of anyone different, as human as that is. There must be a man to judge, or there is no order. A man to make the judgment, and a man to enforce it. Of all people, you know this. I live and let live. I choose only for the dead. I choose for the living. These people are sinners, sir and must be led back to the light. This is my mandate, my duty. Admit it, you toy with magic, you don't understand. You, sir, are jealous. I, sir, am tired. I've done my job, fulfilled my contract, I've found the source of the curse. The poison below the well is no more, no thanks to you. Aha! Poison it was then! The weapon of the wicked, to weaken the people's will. What was it? Belladonna? Hemlock? Foxglove? Betrayal! Truth unspoken! Secrets and lies! Wrongs, basically! Your wrongs! The wrongs you visited upon Deborah Comenius! The wrongs that led to her death! She died at the hand of the body politic! She died at all our hands. Most of all, she died at her own. She died because she would not submit. Twas not my plan to kill her, stupid, stubborn woman. Why did she not confess? I would have granted clemency. I would have shown her mercy.
You had the power to stop the madness. But instead, you chose to let it run all the way to its barbaric conclusion. You brought the curse down on New Eden. Then you called we banishers in to fix your mistake. You boast of your knowledge of demons and spirits, but in truth, you master nothing. You're a peacock. All show and no meat. I'm not here today to bring justice. But this man, your governor, brought death to your doors. <laughs> he deserves blaming. And shame on me if I don't do it. <laughs> oh, <it's best. gasps> Friends, have I ever not served the interests of our community? Have I not protected you? Have I not loved you? Then, who will protect us? I will. While Mr. McCraith fights the curse of New Eden, I will protect the people of the Harrows. Or at least, I'll try. Now let's all return to our homes and pray for forgiveness. And, uh, the strength to bear the consequences of our actions. Your fee. One of the many debts my father left me. You'd best put your own debts first, young Master Haskell. Don't I know it? I hate this place. Rest up, then please, let's get out of here. You're angry. Can tell. Of course you can. Aren't you angry? I'm more... disgusted. This region is doomed. I know it in my bones. There's no shortage of suffering around here. Ask or sell to that when you ordered Deborah's execution. I know that we're together, and it makes us strong, but I'm still weary.
Don't lose yourself. You've done far more than I could ever have asked. I'll do what it takes, and gladly. You need not ask it. The closer we get to my body, to the truth about what happened here, the stronger I feel. My senses rise. It's as if I can taste the silence, smell the scent of wood smoke, feel the warmth of your body, feel Deborah's wrath. I feel it as if it were a part of me. I understand her anger. I feel her rage and can't help but relate to it. But that anger of mine, that fear, I thought when I left home, I'd left them behind. Past is the past. You still get to choose your future. Times like this, old wounds can ache. Seems normal. It's more than that. My past casts a growing shadow upon my heart. So much so that the sister I thought was gone for good seems to be winding her way back to me. Your sister. Ayomi Day, wasn't it? No. As a child, before I left Cuba, I had a friend. I chose to call her my sister. That night, the night I died, I dreamed of her. I dreamed of Calendre. Did you go looking for her? Was she near him? It's not beyond the realm of possibility. It's so far beyond the realm of possibility you wouldn't believe it. No, she wasn't there. But I heard her voice. I'd swear on it. How could that be? Dreams can be vivid. It can be difficult to separate them from reality. I was awake, Red. What did you hear her say? I don't know. I don't remember. I think she said we were family. Never to be divided. She's after my job. She can't have it. I'm your family now. Nothing's tearing us apart. Death has already torn us apart. I hate this is where we are. I hate that I'll have to say goodbye. But for now, I'll do everything in my power to catch you. This is how we win. Thank you for being the kindest soul I've ever met. Thank you for being the bravest. Ceridian? Uh, what do you mean, Ceridian? Ceridian, what's wrong? I don't think she can hear us. We need to go back to the swamps. You understand that? But it's a bird. It's Ceridian, by way of the invisible, speaking through the crow. But it doesn't work both ways. Imagine having a conversation with someone...
Can you feel it? I have goosebumps. The veil. Of... Creeping ivy. I always hated these sap thirsty specters. If I bruised the bud so they show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. The wards have weakened. Ceridian's power wanes. Nobody's home. I can feel it. Crows. They flock to that great tree up there. The banishers are here. Already? How unfortunate. You called us. Did I? I thought I had more time. In the end, it runs out for all of us. As I depart this old carcass, I leave no burning heart behind. stay. To prevail, you must first set your heart at peace. When at last you face the nightmare, you must both be clear on what you want. You must... What do you mean? It is not for me to give you answers, only to prepare you for what awaits. Then we can all go to sleep. Seeker doesn't hate you, Rory. She's just not used to being trusted. Protect her. For me. You're too late, old moss head. 
as ever. I'm right here, you know. Moss head is no more. He'll never drink from your skull now, will he? Another ancient promise broken. But what about me? How do I live now? You're all I ever had, and all I'll ever have. <laughs> Can I set the world on fire now? I just want to see it burn. A pity. Farewell, then.
she took me in when my father, when no one else wanted me. She taught me to stand up straight. Leave her be, for now. Hmm. I am tired of all this death. Want to talk about it? I will do. destroy the roots. Seeker now. She'll try to make sense of her pain. Or perhaps she'll sit with it a while. If she has regrets, she must tame them. Grief knows no rule book. I remember Aoife's wake. Friends and neighbors came from miles around. We stood and watched over for a day and a night. There was food and drink, song and dance. We honored and rejoiced in the life she'd led, short as it was. I did not have a wake when my father died. Not my mother, nor Blair or Anik. But we were running from our enemies and barely had time to bury them. It was as if their deaths hadn't happened. What if I cannot hold a wake for you? You saw Seeker. Wake or not, loss needs to be felt, and lived, and done. As long as my body is free of the nightmare, that is all that matters. I'll be all right. Aye. You'll be all right. What about me? What about me when you are truly gone? Who am I without you? I never wanted to know. When I woke in that cave, I felt like I'd lost everything. I feel like I lost everything. I'm still here. For now. But I'm so afraid when you won't be anymore. I'm afraid to. Afraid to leave you behind. Afraid to journey on. I had such plans. We'd live such wonders together. Just... I wanted more time. So did I. But we are together now. One last great adventure. Aye. That's something. I miss the warmth of your skin. 
So much. And I yours. But are we sure about what we're doing? Are you sure this is what you want? We made an agreement. Are you having second thoughts? I don't know. Maybe. Ceridian's death has changed things for you. Aye. But more so Seeker's grief. I could have you back. I long for it. It pains me. Should we reconsider? It may not be too late to change our minds. But you must promise me, Red, whatever we decide, we stick to it. We cannot change our minds again. I swear it, my love. This is it. We may be tempted. We must not succumb. Vanishers will remain. Vanishers to the end. I, my love. To the end. Is it worse to lose your faith in your fathers than it is to lose faith in yourself? Those in the harrows who lived would be wise to look inwards, to reflect, and then to pay penance. But none carry a greater burden than young Lamentation Haskell. How will he guide the faltering faithful, when he has so little faith in himself?
picking up something spectral nearby. for the wicked. You should hurry. Some of the beacons have gone out. I suppose Ceridian's magic died with her. These specters are getting more aggressive. Adea, I miss you. There's her voice again. It... I'm talking to you, little sister. Sister. What aren't you telling me? I'm telling you it's dangerous and we need to move on. Oh, it feels even more dangerous. That's possible. Try this on! Stop a bastard! I... I have another in sight. My father would tell me stories. In the heart of the mountains lived a mystical race who desired only peace. <laughs> I can hear him now. Uh, these mystics, he said, they valued life 
and used as gold only for their mausoleums. All creatures were accepted among them except the men who were warned to stay away. Bellicose and greedy. Let me guess, they went anyway. Aye, ah, in Bellicose they did. And being greedy, they went after the gold. The mausoleums desecrated, the mystics cursed the humans, hid themselves away. And they remind me of Ceridian, who would rest her. The mountains must be rich in ore. It looks a bit rickety. It's built for a team. One man alone should be fine. Should be. Pleasant way to die. Was a pleasant way to die, is it? That's almost it. Red, come look.
One more rope and it's done. I bet it's up there. Quite the right alignment. One more rope and it's done. I bet it's up there. The lift should be freed now. These beams look fragile. Or well, they hold. Would you rather climb? If it were up to me, I wouldn't be here to begin with. climbed higher or has the weather gotten colder? The nightmare is at work. She's likely using the weather in New Eden to further isolate its people. Then once the curse has lifted, the snow will disappear. I think so.
together? Yes. Nearby.
standing by. Can't outrun a ghost. Once more with feeling. Fancy a race? I'm right. Be ready. Oh, I hate those things. Wasn't your first. Won't be your last. Aye. Thank you. What is lurking here? Time to work, Banisher. You've excelled of late. And you haven't crowed about it once. At your dose, did you? Don't get cocky. There's always more to learn. Key thing about a scourge? A scourge is made of many spectres merged. Not always. A harvester, for example, is a scourge born of a single specter. A scourge will always seek a new physical body, often made of different materials. Very poor. Perhaps you'd prefer an easier question? On the nature of a ghost, perhaps? Ghosts have ties, objects through which they're bound to someone living. You are the opposite of Charles. Good at the practical, terrible at the academic. I hope it's enough. You hear that? Over here. <laughs> A peaceful place in different times. Before the nightmare's influence, you mean? Let's reach the fort and a fire and warm you up. I feel a draft. From the invisible. Trouble ahead. Spectres are attacking the fort. Seek no grill. Hold fire. That fellow's not dead. None in, none out. Not living nor dead. 
Name's Red McCraith. I'm obviously a banisher. Open the door there. Of business within. Your business is, if you'll excuse my articulating the evidence, not my business. I have my orders. You can't come in. I hear you, friend. What's your name? Name's Andrew White. You seem a pleasant fellow. I like a Scot me, but standing here, I'm on duty. And when I'm on duty, I'm not your friend. Uh, listen, mate, folk in here have problems enough, and I can't be disobeying orders. Either Priest or Pennington would have my guts, and I fancy neither. Who is this Priest? May I speak with him? Him is a her. Helen Priest ain't here. She's on an excursion to the outpost, searching for supplies. Now, you want to lend a hand? Mrs. Priest and her party are overdue. You can't miss the outpost. It looks out across the valley. If you could find her, make sure she doesn't die, you'd surely gain her favor. And favor, as they say, opens doors. Get in a fight and find your boss and dig her out of whatever hole she's in. All right. I can do that. They have spectre troubles. Let's first clear the nearby nest to relieve the fort, then deal with the missing. Right. I'll likely be back. Find our friends, Banisher. Or put them to rest. I'll try. As soon as I take care of the Spectre's nest, I'll go looking for the outpost. Death knocks at their gates. No wonder they won't open. They don't have a choice. Another attack may overrun them. The nest... more coming. Come and get your breakfast, boys. On. Rending specters. The fort will run out of powder. These pests don't spring from nowhere. should buy the four a little time. Let's hope it's not too late for the famous Mrs. Priest.
stuck. Looks like you're walking. <laughs> Looks like. I wonder how many there are in the fort. If you were by the day, I'll wager. Still, better to be inside than out. Hugging all the time. is awash with spectres. Did the foraging party really come this way? That would explain why they haven't returned. What is lurking here? Time to work, Banisher. This one's not been dead long. Mm. Let's hope he stays that way. A timely arrival. You'll be Haskell's banishers. Thank you. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day, just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. 
why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly, I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. Andrew White sent us. He thought you might be in trouble. Plainly, you needed your guardian angel. We needed more than one. Thanks to you, we'll resupply the camp. Matthews and Williams did not die in vain. This was a risky expedition. But Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. I suspect that's so. Sometimes difficult choices must be made. That's courage. All the courage in the world will be worthless if those in command won't match it. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. As second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? I watched them die. Soldiers and miners, sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. Pennington can't have taken his decision lightly. It must have been hard on all involved. Is it harder, to your mind, to send someone to their death than it is to do the dying? We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. If there's a way out, we'll find it. I saw her. A banisher marched with my father's infantry. Good for morale, he said. Soldiers usually carry their ghosts with them. War is good for our business. I take it that's how you met. No soldier was in fight. I never worked for the army, but something like that. Sympathy. miserable powder boxes. How low has Pennington brought us? If you didn't like him, why did you follow him? I followed his reputation, but he's no longer the same man. What would you do in his place? I'm doing it. He sits behind his walls waiting for them to fall, and I'm out here fighting to live. We're fighting for our lives. 
captain is in the way. These internal conflicts are a risk for the stability of the fort. A necessary risk for the survival of all. But I agree. This must end. You may leave the crates. I'll send someone back for them. Yeah, the path should be quiet. We cleared the area of the Spectre's Nest. Well, that's a relief. Follow me. Waiting for open the gates. Go talk to Pennington. Make him understand if you can. Where can I find him? He hides in his office. You'll find him there. Where are the others? Williams and the other chap. May God have mercy on their souls. Captain Pennington. No time, no way out, no hope, no way in. No time, no time at all. Captain Pennington, sir. Mr. MacRaith, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work, a mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope, to gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. The job is done. There's no more hope and little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, McGrath. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You've saved no one. You've prolonged the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. The people man the ramparts, ready to fight. You sound like priests. She has changed. Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. When our defences crumble at the last, the pit shall take us all. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. 
The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope, and you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We hold to the last. We resist, till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Permission to take my leave, Captain. And if I refuse it? Are you trying to recruit me, Captain? Do you really think I'd take the King's shilling? <laughs> if I were to offer enough shillings, I'm sure of it. I need no new lieutenants. But if you wish, you may stay. This key unlocks the unused watchtower. You'll build it while you're here. On the one hand, a captain beaten by the world. On the other, his rival, haunted and mutinous. In a fort besieged by vengeful spectres. I know the shit, there's something else. Something darker. <laughs> 